Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and today's lesson on base plates will change the way you work with your router. That little plastic disc screwed to the bottom of your router, it's called a base plate, and it's more important than you may think. By changing the shape and size of your base plate, you can do a lot more with your router. For example, you can replace it with an index base plate for cutting circles. You could add an offset base plate for greater stability when you're routing on an edge. Some time ago, we made an offset base plate that was square for routing dados. You'll find a link to that in the notes below this video. In fact, all the materials and tools and supplies that we're going to talk about in this video, I'll link to in the notes below so that you can find them without having to do a lot of searching yourself. Just click on show more if you're on YouTube. The base plate options are nearly unlimited. And the best part is you can make many of them yourself. The key is to choose the right materials and to properly align your new plate on the bottom of your router. That's what this video is all about. I'll show you how to make a simple base plate, including how to get the holes to line up with the holes in your router's casting and how to center the hole for your router bit precisely. You can then use these skills that you learned in this video to make all sorts of base plates on your own as you need them. So let's get started. The most common base plate materials are MDF, plywood, hardboard, and acrylics. Hardboard and MDF are cheap and they stay flat, which is absolutely vital. In fact, if you're making larger base plates, they can have a tendency to cup over time if you don't use the right material. You definitely don't want that. So I would stay away from solid woods. They're not as stable as man-made materials. If you use plywood, get the good stuff, the Baltic birch. It's far more stable than the construction grade plywoods, especially the thinner sheets. A good source for Baltic birch plywood, if you don't want to buy a whole sheet, is scroll saw packs. These are sold to scroll saws so that they have a selection of different thicknesses. So in a pack, you usually get a variety of 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 inch squares of high quality Baltic birch plywood, just the right size and material for base plates. If you're looking for the ultimate base plate material though, I suggest acrylics. Modern acrylics are very stiff, even in thin pieces. And thinner is better when it comes to base plates because your router bit only has so much cutting length. So the thicker the base plate is, the less of that cutting length you can use. So stick with the thinner materials like acrylic. And the best part about acrylic base plates is you can see through them while you work. Rockler makes 12 by 12 inch, quarter inch thick acrylic plates. You can use these for all sorts of things, including router base plates. And that's what I'm gonna use in this video today. Now, once you've selected your material, the next step is to bore holes to attach it to the base of your router. For this, I just take the stock base plate off my router and I attach it to my new base plate material with some good double-sided tape. This will keep it from moving around while you mark the hole locations. That has to be done very precisely. For this, I'll use a self-centering punch, which has a tapered end that ensures that it marks the exact center of each hole, as long as you hold the punch perpendicular as you use it. I use punches like this for all sorts of things. They're very handy. Now I can bore a hole at each location at the drill press. Don't try to force the bit into the material too fast. You'll end up with fine cracks around the hole. Technically, you could melt the acrylic if you go too slow, but you should have little problem with heat buildup when you're boring through quarter inch thick material. Here I'm using a countersink to create a taper for my flathead machine screws. If I was using panhead screws, or some people call them oval head, I would have to counter bore the hole so the head of the screw sits just beneath the surface. So in that case, I would take a larger bit, usually a Forstner bit, that's a little bit bigger than the head of the screw and I would bore part way into the material. Then I would take a smaller bit that sized to the shaft of the screw and put it in the center of that first hole and drill the rest of the way through. Panhead screws are useful if you want the ability to adjust the plate's position once it's on the router because you can make the holes a little bit oversized. I prefer flathead screws though, as long as I get them precisely located the first time. Because once I do, I know that they're going to auto align the plate to that exact same position every time I take it off and put it back on again. That way I know my bit will always be centered. I don't have to mess with it later on. 
Of course, I have to bore that hole in the center precisely too for my router bit to come through. I do this by installing a pointy bit like a V-groove bit and then using it to mark the exact center. I just need a little dimple on the base plate. I don't need to bore all the way through with the router bit. I can then take the base plate back to the drill press and use a Forstner bit to make the hole larger. Since this base plate is large, I could position it so that it was actually touching the drill press column and that would keep it from spinning on top of the table as I bored the hole. If you do anything smaller than this, I strongly recommend clamping it down because Forstner bits have a tendency to catch an acrylic material and that catch can rip the plate and some skin from your hands pretty easily. I'm going to leave my plate square, but if you want it round, before you drill the hole in the center with your Forstner bit, take a compass, place the point in your little dimple, and then you can trace the perimeter of your circle. Then you'll be sure that the circumference of the circle is centered on the base of the router too. This is a simple base plate, but the skills you've learned, particularly how to align the mounting holes with the holes in the casting, and how to perfectly center that hole for the router bit, can be applied to all sorts of other styles, even full-on jigs that attach to the base of your router. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com. Happy base plating!